Hey everyone, welcome back to After the Island. I'm Elizabeth. I'm Alex. And today we have a special guest from Love Island USA season four, Bryce with us. Welcome. Thank you. How are you guys doing? Good We're to good. be here. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Back home. So did you just get back or how long have you been home now? Uh today's gonna be like my first full day, you know. Okay. I got home, like technically yesterday, but like at odd hours. So Oh nice. my gosh, are you back at work? I'm easing into it. I'm not like <laughs> I told oh my gosh. Him maybe the end of August and I'm gonna I'm gonna ride that out as long as, <laughs> as, long as I can. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> what an adjustment. Where are you right now? Uh I live in downtown LA. So I'm not Oh, oh. fun. I didn't know you were in LA. We're in LA. Oh, you guys are? Nice. Yeah. 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 We yeah. are. Beautiful Los Angeles. It's uh it's a big shock compared to living in the villa, you know totally yes. going right into it yeah so how were you originally oh i was gonna say oh, how sorry. Were you yeah, orig go for originally found for the show or did you apply what was that process like for you yeah so um i actually got a dm from uh one of the i guess recruiters uh named uh, her name is angela and um that was sitting in like my pending DM box for like a month or so. I didn't even like notice it was there. And then I was just like going through them, you know, seeing all the like weird messages some people send. And then I'm like, they're like, hey, we're casting for a show. We think you'd be great. Are you interested? And like, usually I wouldn't respond to these sort of things, but um, I was like, hey, yeah, I'm interested. And then that like five minutes later, she's like, can you FaceTime? And I'm like, <laughs> okay, like, yeah, let's do it. Like I have a break right now. And then we FaceTimed and then, yeah, it just kind of took off from there. Have you ever seen the show before? That was my, yeah, I was wondering that too. I, I've i watched like bits and pieces because, um, you know, I know that like I have friends uh, in the UK and they're very into it and they share like insights. And then, um, you know, I'm kind, I'm kind of a Tommy Fury fan and I know he was on. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I like boxing and things like that. So I thought, uh, I thought. I watched like a little bit, but then I also didn't want to watch a lot of it because I didn't want to get um, like too familiar with how it was. I wanted it to be like a very organic experience that I'm just thrown into. Mm -hmm. um, so, and also would be like trying to compare what people like, how they're going to be, how they're not going to be. And then I realized there's just no telling, you know, especially with this show. Yeah, it would have yeah. been a lot of overthinking. Yes, for sure. So going right into it. How did it feel walking in as a bombshell? Um, you know, at first when I found out, well, because they don't really tell you anything. It's very ambiguous, right? So uh, I didn't know, but I did all the like master's interviews and thought that I was actually going to be like one of the original cast or whatever it was, you know. But um, when, I, when I found out that that wasn't what was going to happen because they kind of show you, you know, the episodes or whatever, and you, you realize that the show has started, um, I figured, oh, well, I hope I get on the show at all. But um, when I found out that I was going to be a bombshell, I figured, well, this this means I'm going to have to make quite an impression on a group of people <laughs> that are already very solidified, right? Um, right. And kind of just take it from there. But um, I feel like it was a good fit for me. I feel like that is the way, like, especially looking in hindsight, that's the way that I would have wanted to go in. Because uh, you really get, like, your own, your own kind of moment um, as opposed to, just being flushed in with 10 people. So uh, yeah, I was definitely nervous. It's not like I wasn't nervous. I didn't know what to expect, but you know, I had confidence and, and I was excited. Plus they gave me like a champagne bottle with sparklers. So that made it. Oh, oh, very oh yeah, yes. I forgot about that. You guys had quite an entrance. Yes. Before walking in, did you kind of know who you'd be interested in or, and then it all changed when you got there or was it kind of the same of like what you thought based on what you'd watched? Um, it's kind of a bit of both. Uh, I knew that I had interest in um, Courtney. I knew that I had interest in Maddie. Um, I definitely wanted to get to know like some of the other girls like Deb and and Zeta and just kind of like feel out how they are in person because you know people on screen aren't necessarily full representations of themselves. Um, right. And they, they grilled me about it when I first went in. I don't know how much is actually cared of that. <laughs> Like, who's your top three? And I'm like, I don't have a top three. Who do you think's cute then? And I'm like, I think you're all cute. You know, like, it just, it was funny going in because it's like, they always want to know exactly like who's on your mind. Um, but yeah, I had a perception about who I would be interested in. And then my intuition for whatever reason, 
played out pretty well because, uh, you know, Courtney was kind of at the top of that and she was really the only girl that I was in a relationship with uh, throughout my duration there. Once you were already kind of coupled up with Courtney, uh, yeah. was your focus really Courtney or were you still kind of like, I wish I gave it more time to get to know other Islanders? Um, it, 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 so that's kind of situational. You know, when I went in with Jeff, um, we went in at about like 10 PM at night and then, uh, you know, stayed up until like three in the morning, whatever, playing, you know, truth or dare beer pong and <laughs> to get each other and having weird late night snacks, you know? Um, and then after that night we woke up and then we had a challenge. Um, I talked to Courtney briefly, uh, like once and then another time after the challenge. And then that following night, like not even 24 hours later, there was a recoupling, right? Um, so I had to make like a big impression on her or whoever else that I thought I would be interested in when I came mm -hmm. in. And I didn't really even have enough time to do that. So I definitely um, I definitely felt good about our, my conversation with Courtney. I didn't know exactly about how she was going to feel or where it was going to go, but I knew that there was a, a strong connection there just based off of like, you know, our emotional capacity when we're, you know, talking and things. Um, but once the recoupling happened and she decided to kind of end the relationship with Felipe that she had founded for, you know, 10 something days or, you know, much longer than I had been in there. Um, I had a lot of faith because that's a difficult decision to make, especially considering he's also an OG and, um, there had been other bombshells that she didn't necessarily entertain. Um, so my focus, uh, was very much on her throughout the duration of the time that I was there, you know, all the way up until when I was leaving, I definitely wanted to get to know people, but like my romantic attention was towards Courtney for sure. For sure. Can you explain a little bit about what your connection was like with Courtney? Because you guys were voted, were you voted the most boring couple? We were. Yeah, we were. Well, yeah. <laughs> I think it's just because we like didn't see that much and right. what we did see was just like lovey dovey. Yeah. Yeah. You, that was we it. saw you guys definitely into each other, but we didn't see like too, too much. So what did you guys connect on? What, what did you, yeah. What did you connect on? I mean, I think the, you know, there, there's a whole lot that actually goes on and very little of that percentage that actually is aired. Right. Or goes a, a part of like, you know, how they um, kind of construct the show. But, um, the reason why we had a good connection is we were able to relate on so many things and then things we disagreed on. It never turned into like an argument or like this is a red flag that we can't deal with. Um, there was a red flag, obviously, down the road, which I'm sure you're aware of and we can address. But um, in the beginning of the relationship, it was just we talked about space. We talked about travel, what our interests are, the fact that we both live in Los Angeles, what we want out of life. Um, just really like the fundamentals of like a good relationship starting out trying to get to know each other, you know? Um, and then as the relationship evolved, we talked about more deeper things and, you know, our insecurities, past relationships, things that we don't want to see in the future, um, stuff like that. Uh, I think what wasn't shown, um, or I think the reason why a lot of things weren't shown is because our relationship up until, you know, kind of the, that, that one like catalyst event was super healthy, you know, when there was a lot of turmoil going on in this house and, um, you know, within the villa, there was, a lot of drama ups and downs people were switching partners and we had always been very like consolidated um so i think for the viewers that might have been boring considering this isn't necessarily a show about ultra compatibility but um my personality where i'm at in life is um and the whole reason i went on the show is to find a genuine connection and explore that um at least until i found there wasn't going to be any compatibility and then i probably would have exercised some other options but um but yeah, that was our pretty much our dynamic um, emotionally and physically. We were very, very connected with each other. Um, when we were able to be together, we were pretty inseparable. Uh, you know, she always did really nice things for me. And, you know, I tried to reciprocate, bring her coffee, making the bed. She never ate breakfast, so I couldn't cook, cook breakfast for her. But <laughs> we did, we did a lot. Correct. We we're always close. So correct me if i'm wrong but do you think that proximity played a huge part in courtney originally choosing you over felipe you you mean uh the pro like just the fact that there wasn't any other people or what do you mean the by fact that you and courtney both live in la and felipe lives in oh. dubai uh i think it like added into her decision but i think that there was a lot of factors i mean i know i spoke with her and she told me that what the relationship was kind of lacking with Felipe that she had founded so far 
she felt like I actually possessed with her, right? So like, I think the main reason why she picked me is because other than a sexual attraction, which, you know, is something she shared with Felipe, we had a, like a like a deep emotional connection, right? Where it was just effortless to talk. It wasn't like pulling teeth. It wasn't one-sided. It was like, we kind of just bounced off of each other. And I think that was the, the primary reason. And then again, yeah, like, I want children. She wants children. I don't know if Felipe did. Um, I know that he travels and he's a model. And, you know, I, I don't I don't know how that played into her future for, you know, essentially wanting to settle down at some point. But um, right. yeah, I'm sure the proximity definitely came into it. There was a lot of different factors, I would imagine. Yeah. So this is a question that a lot of people had is when did you feel like the connection kind of shifted or did it shift as time went on? Yeah, honestly, it was it was strange. I haven't experienced like really anything like this um, in my life, and you know, I've been dating for a little while. Uh, there was a there was just a period there um, around like I don't even know exactly what day it was. I don't know. We were like twelve days in or something like that, and um, I noticed one night that uh, after after we there was like a truth or dare game. And after that truth or dare game, uh, I noticed that she seemed to have like some anxiety, right? Like she seemed to not be like her bubbly self as much as she was. And, um, and that evening, you know, we were in bed and we definitely were kissing, maybe not to the same extent, but the night prior, we had only gotten like three hours of sleep. So I was, I was really exhausted, you know? And I think that, um, when we, so when, so when we were in bed, um, we were, we were kissing and, and talking and stuff like that. And I felt like something was off. So I kind of asked her like, Hey, are you okay? Is everything all right? Like, do you want to talk about this? Do you want to like go talk? And she's like, I don't really want to talk right now. Um, and that's kind of actually depicted on the show. You know, you only see a brief second of it, but that conversation kind of went on for a little bit. Um, and I think that that started um, kind of like some sort of a, like a seed of doubt. And since we didn't have any problems leading up to that, it almost seemed as if, um, you know, combined with whatever the, her and the girls were talking about, um, it kind of just manifested into something more because the following day we were, we were separated. There, you know, there's a lot of boys time and girls time. So I wasn't able to really properly address everything, but, um, no, I definitely wouldn't say it was something that was ongoing or like, it was like, we built up this sort of incompatibility. It was more like this one event that I feel like very easily could have been worked out. She agreed very easily was not like a problem and we could have worked it out. Um, but then, you know, it ended up, you know, I think make being a part of the decision why the girls sent me home. I'm still not completely convinced about why they made that decision, but I'm sure that, you know, right into it. So this one event is essentially that you were tired and you wanted to go to bed and not stay up making out in the bed or whatnot. And Courtney yeah. did is, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, she had felt that I was not um, reciprocating that like love language of hers, which is mm -hmm. very passionate. And, um, you know, she said throughout the day when we're out and about, like, I don't feel like there's any problems. Like we kiss, you know, you don't you don't you have no problem displaying how you feel about me. And I love that. But when it's just you and I this past night, you know, you were you were exhausted or whatever. But, you know, um, there should have been like some sort of a compromise. And the, the thing that was just surprising to me is because, you know, she also brought up eye rolling, which is also shown in the show. Um, you know, we, we were, we still kissed. It just probably wasn't for the duration that she might've been used to. Um, mm -hmm. or that she would have liked to see. And, you know, when I asked her if she was okay and she's like, I don't want to talk. I kind of jokingly, you know, she has her hand on my, like, you know, my face and it was, it was like a cute thing. I don't, she must've misinterpreted it, but you know, I kind of rolled my eyes, I suppose. I mean, being like, come on, like, let's talk about this and work it out. Cause that's just the type of guy that I am. If I see a problem in a relationship, I, I really want to address it before it blows mm -hmm. up. Like it did. Right. Yeah. So going off of that, did, were you blindsided by being eliminated? Uh, yeah, but that was simply because I, I knew that out of the people that were up there, other than this one issue, Courtney and I actually, were considered um, one of the strongest couples in the villa. I mean, it's really hard to rival with Timmy and Zeta, but they actually have had like a, a, a past that has had some some peaks and valleys, right? You know, they've been split up, they haven't been split up, they reconnected, you know, they fought over certain things. Um, and then, you know, there's Jesse who's standing up there and uh, obviously, excuse me, he's had 
these issues with Deb. They got voted the most one-sided couple um, during that that vote. You know, especially how America sees things really plays into you right. know, your own perception. Um, and then you have Jared up there who hasn't founded a connection. He hadn't been there very long, but still longer than I was. You know, I was there for 24 hours. He's been there for about three days before that recoupling or maybe two days. Um, and he still hadn't really been able to find a connection with somebody that was in there and actually run with it. And then you have Chaz, who's just like <laughs> all over the place. And everything I've seen on social media is just like, you know, ah, Chaz, but not Bryce. Like Chaz, like this. like just so so many people for some reason have this perception that like it didn't make any sense and by comparison. You know, I'm not saying like, you know, they wanted me there or not, but just by like, um, you know, just by comparison. And then the situation where Deb stu stood up and said, we feel like there's a lot of instability in this couple. I was like, that can't be me, you know, because it's mm -hmm. an issue. But we we worked it out. I guess looking back, Courtney might not have been able to, to tell the girls that we were, you know, we were working on it because it was a very short period of time before the, the elimination. Um, but uh, we were working it out. And I was like, that can't be me because there's two people here where their partners feel very you know, take like Chaz had that issues with Serenity and following the issues with Serenity, he's got another girl, Kat, who's, he's saying he's all in for, and she's saying she still wants to explore other options. That's instability to me. I don't know how you would define it, but that's instability. Um, as opposed to one argument between me and Courtney about not, not necessarily kissing enough. And then Jesse, you know, obviously um, he's had his ups and downs with Deb. So when they said my name, um, I just started like this whole like rush of, what like what why you know like i have something really good going on here and like i'm here for the right reasons and the girls know that like i've expressed many times and shown that like i don't care about winning or or getting the money i just want to kind of build on the relationship that i have so far with courtney and 90 like eight percent of that relationship has been super healthy and um bountiful so yeah i was i was i was definitely taken back by it Felt like there was some conspiracy theories going on between the girls or something. I don't I don't know exactly what was going on. I think what confused me as a viewer is that you guys were when they, you were announced that you were one of the bottom boys, you guys like had a quick little make out right before you lined up. So I was like, oh, they're all good. So I was like, oh, Chaz is going home for sure. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why so many of the questions that were submitted into Alex and I for this interview was oh, what are we missing? Like, what did we not see? happen to allow those girls to have that chat i mean maybe zeta really saw um like a red flag in the relationship not working when she was a part of your three-way conversation yeah. um listening in yeah, yeah what was that conversation because it kind of the way that it was shown i i didn't really understand why she had to explain instead of courtney it looked like we were missing something that happened that made courtney not necessarily like afraid of you but yeah, like not I'm wanting, I don't, yeah. yeah, not wanting like a confrontation or something yeah. along those lines. Um, again, this is this is just speculation because I don't know exactly how Courtney feels. I never had the opportunity to really, especially after being eliminated, like kind of um, talk with her about those feelings and emotions. And you know, during that conversation, you know, I asked why Zita is there just basically because our relationship was founded on just the two of us. There was never any you know any other third party that was involved saying hey you guys would really be great together let's get you together you know um so when zita was there i was a little confused i like zita a lot she's one of my favorite people in the villa but she's definitely not impartial right she's 100 percent courtney's best friend so i felt like if you're gonna have a third party maybe have it be somebody that likes more neutral people. yeah yeah more neutral, right um but uh my interpretation of that was uh you know the way that they described it is that you know, uh, Courtney has like a lot of um, emotions and feelings and, uh, and different different ways of expressing herself. And Zeta was kind of there to just help facilitate and keep like keep her on track as to what she was uh, what she was discussing with me, you know, and the primary reason was that we haven't been passionate enough at nighttime, um, you know, and then the obviously the eye rolling situation, which, you know, I described was in a playful manner that she might have misinterpreted. But um, but. Yeah, you know, uh, and then leading back to your, you know, I mean, a lot, of, I'm sorry, a lot of things you guys didn't see was the re resolution of that conversation, because it didn't end with her saying, yeah, we'll see, we'll take it day by day. Like, she's not that type of girl. 
Courtney is so blunt, so straightforward. Um, she wouldn't be intimate if she wasn't feeling it anymore with me or anyone else. Um, she wouldn't say things she doesn't mean, but the resolution of that conversation was actually like, you know, I'm like, do you think we're going to be able to work on this? She's like, we'll see. And I'm like, how do you see things like kind of playing out, you know, um, moving forward as far as like our dynamic, you know, do you want me to like give you some space or whatever it is? And she's like, no, I don't want anything to change. I just, you know, the, the things I addressed with, to you, I want to be properly addressed so that we don't have issues moving forward because I see something with you. Now, that was like essentially what was said. It just wasn't aired for whatever reason. Um, and we actually had another talk right before the elimination, which consisted of the same things. Um, you know, we even talked about if new people come in, cause that's what we thought was going to happen. And we were both like, no, like what happened was not a big enough deal for us to want to explore a new option and, and unless it continued. Right. Like if the, mm -hmm. the pattern she didn't like, um, um, continued then you know maybe that would have been something that you know she would have explored but um yeah you know and and that's the other thing like you see right before i'm eliminated and she's possibly eliminated that you know we kiss and it's not like a surface level level kiss like her and i had an emotional connection and that was shown every time that we were close and that's why we were kind of kissing a lot it wasn't purely like a sexual sexually driven thing right um, I'm sure that confused users because, or I'm sorry, viewers, because <laughs> it was, it, it was genuine. And, you know, she also did look shocked when I was eliminated. Um, you know, she, you know, it's hard to say exactly what she was feeling in her head, but when we talked for the like 30 seconds before she went in to help Maddie, you know, kind of pack her stuff, um, you know, she was like, I'm sorry, like this sucks. Like, are you going to be okay? Like, you know, um, you know, like things, things of that nature. Like, it's not like she wanted it to happen. So a lot mm -hmm. of me, feel like it might've been the girls protecting her, um, or could possibly be that we had a really healthy relationship and, you know, maybe some people don't necessarily want that or we're super boring and they think Courtney needs to be with somebody who causes a lot of drama or is just more, you know, um, you know, eccentric. I don't, I don't really know what it was, but sure. that, would, that would be my perception. Do you think that if you had stayed, you would have been persuaded in Casa more? Um, I mean, have you I, watched enough? Like, have you watched all the episodes to yeah. know if you would have been interested <laughs> in any of the people? Or if, it, yeah. it's I wouldn't have been interested. It just goes back to like the original question when you asked me if I would have explored other connections in the villa when mm -hmm. I first went there. Um, I'm just I'm I, I, the reason I went in there was because I wanted to find something like genuine and that I saw longevity with and I and I saw that with Courtney like we even had times that we were talking about marriage which I know sounds crazy because we you know you're only in there for like is but it feels like you've been together for weeks or months you know what I yeah. mean we talked about how many children we want and we won second place in the Mrs. challenge which means we really knew a lot about each other just remembered important details like I guess body count isn't really an important detail or section. You know, favorite oh my section. God. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, you know, I don't think that, uh, I can't say obviously cause I was never put in that situation, but, um, I had a really good thing going with her and I feel like, um, it was, it was kind of cut short. Um, and I feel like if I would have had a little bit more time to talk to her and demonstrate that, um, the issues that she was feeling were something that could be very easily addressed. Uh, I think, yeah, I think, I think we would have been able to work through that. And I think just based off of my nature and her nature of what we really want and why we're in that villa is to find a genuine connection. And we found that, you know, we both agreed that and everybody in the villa actually agreed to when we would talk, you know, it's, it's like Chaz even said, I want a relationship like yours and Courtney's and I wish Serenity and I had that right now. And I was like, okay, man, well, you have the option, you know, you got to make this, this healthy with her. Cause that's why her, Courtney and I get along really well. Or mm -hmm. healthy, you you guys should think about maybe going in different directions because it's not good to be in a toxic relationship because I've been in them before. Right. I, I also mm -hmm. don't know how that was depicted. So, mm -hmm. so going off of that, do you think you would have done anything differently in any of those situations? Yeah. Um, no, you know, I don't have like literally any regrets because I stayed very authentic to who I was and genuine, and that might have been. A little bit boring because I'm I, I would like I think I have a pretty consistent personality and I think that's kind of shown on the show and I don't know how good of TV that makes to see somebody who's just you know like one direction but 
in uh, in relationships, it, the consistency aspect has always been something that's important to me. So I stayed true to myself. I saw a relationship and a you know a possible connection outside of the villa with somebody and I explored that and and put effort and and time into it because that's what I went in there to do. So I really wouldn't have done anything differently. I do wish I was given a, like at least a little bit more time before the elimination so that at least Courtney could have described to the girls like hey, you know, Bryce and I are working these things out. There's no reason to, you know, because when when things happen sometimes they feel monumental until you're able to address them with your partner and see really what was going on in their mind, you know, and I think that right. might led into their decision. So no, I do you think have. that, sorry, do you think that you will connect with Courtney if she comes out of the villa single? Um, yeah, you know, even in, a, even if she comes out in a relationship, I don't think that that's going to kind of, you know, hinder us from at least talking, you know, I don't know about, I don't know about an actual relationship because I need to, I need to talk to her about what, what her true like feelings were when that happened, you know, and if she felt like it was actually something that we would be able to work out later, or if it's something that she felt was just, this is a monumental difference. Um, but to me, not being intimate one, you know, one night, which was the primary concern, I feel like I could have very easily addressed, you know, but if she saw other things that maybe she didn't share with me, or Zita might have seen things, then I would just want to be aware of what that was, because it would give me some clarity, you know, of, of the situation. But, um, but yeah, you know, I mean, even if she comes out in a relationship, you know, I don't, I don't know exactly how that would play out. But um, we had a good connection. And that doesn't necessarily mean it has to be romantic. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. For sure. A really good person. So awesome. Oh, well, um, one of our favorite questions to ask is, was there anything? Sorry, there's a siren. Hold on. <laughs> I have like thousands of no. I'm like, is that his oh siren God, or our oh siren? Oh my God, no, there was an ambulance that just drove by. Oh. Um, what was your favorite moment in the villa? If it it could, it can be like unseen or seen. Um, well, you know, to be honest with you, the uh, we did like quite a few challenges um, while I was in the villa. But my fa my favorite moment definitely because the challenges really were able to bring me out of my box, and and I, I've never been in situations like that. I play games with my friends in football, but I've never been like wearing a Speedo. <laughs> yeah. You know, that, uh, the spaceship challenge that, you know, I did with Courtney and the one that we hosted, that was just like such an incredibly fun time, you know, watching all the couples kind of work through that together. Um, mm -hmm. It felt like a little adult amusement water park type. I love it. <laughs> when it ended, um, that was, yeah, that was definitely, uh, you know, a memorable moment, but there was, there was so many you know, like even little mm -hmm. things up and making protein shakes, working out with Andy, talking to Jesse about future plans and investments, you know, like um, oh my God. talking to Isaiah about style and, you know, fitness and like whatever else, you know, it was like, there was a lot of really great things. And then also mm -hmm. connecting with the girls and seeing like how they feel and where they live and what they want after this and what they plan to do with it. So um, yeah, so like so many great experiences. And that's why, you know, I don't regret anything because I, I feel like I got, even though I'm not, I wasn't there the entire time. I feel like I, <laughs> you know. What um, Alex likes to ask this question. I don't want her to forget. Um, <laughs> so I'll just ask it for her. Go for uh, it. What is your horoscope? Is that how I ask? Oh, it? yeah. What's your sign? What's your sign? Uh, well, you're probably going to shut off the camera after you hear it, but I'm a Gemini. So am I. <laughs> Are you really? <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Every time I tell people, <laughs> Gemini gang. But no, every time I tell people that, I'm a Gemini. For some reason, they just like take two steps back, and I'm like, "Why? Like, what's the problem? Like, this? I don't know. I'm not heavy into the astrology, but um, yeah, Gemini." Okay, good. Good to know. That's like the number one question everyone wants to know. Mm -hmm. Everyone's signs. Do you know what Courtney yeah. is? Did you guys talk about it? We did talk about it. I know her birthday is uh, the 25th of November, so maybe. Wow. <laughs> okay. What is that? I'm trying to um, think. Sagittarius? I don't know what it is. I think, yeah. I, think that. I don't know. Sagittarius. Yeah. She, like, regardless of whatever thing, she's like, I love Gemini's. We get along really well. Because I was thinking she's going to be like when I say Gemini. Because a lot of girls are like, some either lean very far in because they think, you know, like we're mysterious or something. And then <laughs> others take like three steps back. So it just depends. And I was hoping, you know, she was going to obviously be interested. But um, yeah, I think it's Sag. And, you know, for, 
for the duration there, we were, you know, we had a really genuine connection. So Sagittarius and Gemini get along great. I'm just saying. Yeah, they? maybe you guys can. Oh, yeah. Maybe there is hope. Yes, maybe there's hope outside the <laughs> villa. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Bryce, for coming on. We are so happy to talk to you and we hope we get to meet you. You're in L.A., so yes. let's meet up. Yeah, let's do it. I don't know. I don't, are you guys in West L.A.? Uh, she's in Venice and oh. I'm in West Hollywood-ish. Yeah, yeah, so the West Side mostly. I'm on the East Side, but I'm out there all the time. Um, we could exchange info at some point and yeah. We yeah, talk. absolutely. Like your guys yeah. And um, yeah, this was wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah thank, thank you, you so much. Coming. Yeah, of course. I'll talk to you guys. Bye. Soon. Bye. Okay. Bye. <laughs>